Remember when NXT TakeOvers had a bunch of life and energy and NXT was on the rise and not just kind of a third brand that was just kind of there and kind of soulless? Well, I'm John Retlin, and this is a retro review of NXT TakeOver Unstoppable. The women's championship match meant a whole lot that back then and even now, and boy, Becky Lynch and Sasha tore it up and stole the goddamn show. And we start off this show with wrestlers and fans talking about NXT being a brand on the rise, bringing wrestling back to the people, including Hulk Hogan. He probably thought the N in NXT meant something else. But, oh wait, this was just before he got exposed as the racist grandpa that he is and how he hates all of them. And be careful what you say on camera. Not actually apologizing for what he, for what he got caught for. But anyway... This actually was a pretty damn good show. Now, it was also proof that you could do a great takeover event in just under two hours. This was like an um, hour, 58 minutes, and some odd seconds. And it told some great stories, and it got in and out really, really quickly without overstaying his welcome, otherwise known as my sex life. But anyway, Hideo Otami is attacked in the parking lot. He was supposed to be part of this number one contenders match, but he had a shoulder injury. Owens walks by and says, oh, that's a shame. And unfortunately, that would pretty much be the high mark of uh, the now, you know, the now once again Kenta's career in WWE. Because he would suffer injuries, and this injury kind of took him out of being any kind of main eventer. I don't know if it actually would have worked with him as NXT champion, but it would have been rather interesting to see. So, we have uh, Rich use the weapon as a ladder. Brennan, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxon on commentary. I want to say one thing really quickly, or ask one question. Do you guys want me to review more of these NXT TakeOvers, like from 2015. You want me to review more? Because I thought about reviewing NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 1. Because I want to relive Sasha versus Bayley and just see if that match is just as goddamn great. It is as goddamn great as I remember. And I will fight you if you disagree. That, I kid. I kid. You guys can like whatever you want. But would, would you like to see me review more of those? Because I kind of like to. Um, but anyway, we get Breeze with a runway model entrance because, you know, he, he is the gorgeous one. And then we get Balor with a spoopy entrance and everything and a lot of chanting and the crowd going absolutely apeshit. And he, he's new with wings. Uh, this was also the number one contenders match just with Hideo taken out of it. Good stuff. Crowd was hot for everything. And Breeze used a lot of rest holds trying to grind down on uh, Balor. Have fun on seeing that. Eventually, um... An exposed turnbuckle spot would lead to a two count, but then Balor would come back, hit the coup de, coup de gras, coup de gras, coup de Royce Gracie, I'm just going to call it that from now on, and got the victory. So he would go on to face Kevin Owens uh, at Beast in the East. Yeah, it was in Japan, so it probably was designed for Hideo to get a hero's welcome, but you know what? It was actually a pretty damn good, <coughs> pretty damn good match for what it was. We then get footage of NXT live events, and then we go to Emma and Dana Brooke versus Charlotte and Bailey. Back when Charlotte didn't look like a real doll. Seriously, I mean, I, I'm not. I, I people can do whatever they want with their bodies, but it's just it's just weird to see the transformation with her. All these other women look relatively the same, sort of, but and it's their bodies. They can do what they want. I mean, I know I sound like I'm being critical, but just something. I just you think what happened? Like you think you think you see a whole bunch of guys, and you're like. Wow, what the fuck did they do themselves? I just don't get it. I just don't get why WWE makes their talents get this stuff when they're just fine how they are and they can be presented as real people that are incredibly athletic and can do things that very few others can. They could be role models that way. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, Emma and Dana Brooke were a hell of a team. I wish they would had kept them together longer. They were only together till about, I think, the end of 2015 and Dana Brooke got called up to be paired with Charlotte or was sometime after that. But Charlotte and Bailey, they were, you know, this was one of the last times they would really team up and be part of a, be part of like a big NXT event, as uh, Charlotte, Becky, and Sasha would be called up sometime later, and this was good stuff. Um, they referenced Emma's uh, phone case theft, if you remember that, then you know, credit to you. And I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming Emma. The the <clears throat> these things do happen. And whatever the circumstances were, you know, let's move on from that. But it's just kind of funny thinking back on, like, oh, this was right around that time. Very good heel work and eventually natural selection from the genetically superior Charlotte because that doesn't have some bad, um, you know, undertones, overtones, all kinds of tones to it. Emma gets pinned. And then they reference uh, Zane's shoulder as he got injured in a match with John Cena. I think it was the U.S. Open Challenge. It was in Montreal. 
And then we have Rhino versus Baron Corbin. Well, this is a cool down match. This is also when Baron Corbin's character actually felt fresh. And him and Rhino had a decent match for about seven minutes. End of days, one, two, three. And then Owens' debut on Raw against Cena, where Owens decided to be... Where Owens decided to just step on the uh, U.S. Championship after laying out Cena with the pop-up powerbomb. And then Enzo and Cass with Carmella versus Blake and Murphy. NXT tag title shot, or NXT tag title match, that is. And... Carmella has outlasted, you know, outlasted both Enzo and Cass by a landslide, which is hilarious. And I'm not saying that Carmella hasn't put in some work. I still don't think she's all that good in the ring, but at least it shows dedication from her and how wrong I was about Enzo and especially about Cass. And I'm happy that I was wrong about those two pieces of shit. And credit to Carmella for being able to stick around in the company this long, <laughs> especially when her first <laughs> character was being a hairdresser. And now she's a stunt double for the women in Final Destination 3. Boy, I'm being so complimentary, aren't I? So, um, Enzo getting his ass kicked would never get old. And, you know, he got beat up a whole lot. Then Cass got in the ring. And then we had a big old schmoz. And suddenly, somebody attacks Carmella. It's Alexa Bliss. The Glitter Glitz Sparkle Bliss. You know, she suddenly attacks, um, knocks Enzo off the, uh, turnbuckle. Onto the or off the ropes on the turnbuckle, and then he gets pinned. One, two, three. Blake and Murphy retain. Alexa is the baddie that she is now. Good. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. And then um, we get uh, we get Eva Marie in the crowd. If you want to talk about somebody that was embarrassing to professional wrestling, she was. And I'm talking about in the ring. Now I know she has defended it, and she defended it against what Mia Khalifa, whatever that you know, Arby's roast beef pile had to say, but. I will give her credit for that, but as far as being, a, you know, a competitor in the ring, hey, she tried. She tried to do stuff. She just wasn't very good at it, and I don't want to see Eva Marie come back, please, no, for the love of God. That was some terrible TV watching her there. She should not be brought back to the fold. They're doing another Mae Young Classic. The last thing they need to do is have Eva Marie there, so yeah, that's my opinion. People can, people can disagree with me if they want, and that's okay. I just don't want to see her back. We think it's Sasha versus Becky, NXT Women's Championship... I don't know why I'm applauding a match that happened five years ago, but this was magnificent. This was great shit. Sasha, full-on bitchy heel. Becky, on the rise. This was the match where Becky truly arrived in NXT. Now, she had already had some good matches before that, but they had finally figured out, like, you know, really what to do with her. The whole steampunk thing and the fact that Becky was really getting over with the fans. Becky and Sasha doing some good shit. A very good submission-based match. This was show-stealing, terrific, magnificent. This was goddamn great stuff. All the reversals and all the submissions of it. Eventually, a bank statement would tap out Becky Lynch. But Becky came out the star here. And it's not like, oh, Becky, uh, you know, outshined Sasha. Quite the contrary. Becky just shined so damn bright. And the crowd gave her a stain. They gave both women a stain ovation. Gave Becky a stain ovation. And this is really good stuff. If you see nothing else from this show, check out Sasha versus Becky. This was fucking terrific. And then we get Owens versus Zayn. NXT title and... Good for what it was, but Zayn had an injured shoulder. You could tell these two worked a uh, good style to be safe with each other um, while, you know, making it look like they were both serious, as both have worked together in Ring of Honor, and they're both lifelong friends, so they really do know how to, uh, and they know how to work well with each other, and Owens wanted to make sure that he and hurt his friend. And he eventually would lay out Zayn, they would call out the match, it would be a referee stoppage, and then... And then, uh, you know, he's about to hit him with a chair. And it looks like he's delaying because he knows this music's supposed to hit. But Owens hits him with a chair once and then Samoa Joe's music hits. And the crowd goes absolutely apeshit. I went apeshit. I remember going apeshit on Twitter at this time. And I was like, holy shit, Samoa Joe's actually there. So that was really good stuff. He stares down uh, Owens. He leaves and he's checking on Sami Zayn. Owens tries to come back and Joe's like, you know, like this and everything. And, you know, getting ready to face him. So this is a pretty good takeover. And the clock's in under two hours. This was really good stuff. It's well worth reliving. If, But again, if nothing else, check out Sasha versus Becky. That match was fucking phenomenal. Please check it out. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Recklin. I'll see you soon.